Back with another one real quick, no intros, just business. You're watching Sekider and this is what we're watching for the week of March 14th to the 18th. Before we continue, we'd just like to remind you that this video is meant for educational purposes only and isn't meant to replace the financial or legal advice of a paid professional. Furthermore, no mention of any stock on this page is an advertisement for that stock unless otherwise stated, and we're really just here trying to shine a light on the corners of our stock market for those who are new to our local exchange. Also, we'd appreciate it if you could do us a solid, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and maybe share our content with others out there. We put in the work so that you guys can do a little bit less. Now let's get to it. Alright, so today we're going to talk about a couple companies that, based on their current PE ratios, appear to be some of the most undervalued firms in our stock market at the moment. Of course, PE ratios aren't a catch-all statistic, but as Monish Pabrai said in his book The Dando Investor, if a business is trading at a PE of 3, it's worth a closer look. We're going to start today with a company from one of the families of Korea's largest chemical and auto parts manufacturers, KCC. The company that we'll actually be talking about is KCC Glass Corp, stock code 344820. Now, as we mentioned, today's focus is on low PE ratio stocks and as of this week, KCC Autoglass is sitting at a PER of only 2.99 in spite of its stock more than doubling year on year. Now this could be due in large part to the very quiet merger they had last year with Korea Autoglass who was previously Korea's premier autoglass manufacturer for not only Kia and Hyundai but GM Korea as well. Needless to say, with the sheer size and distribution capabilities of KCC, now an asset to a company already entrenched in the B2B autoglass manufacturing space, the merger of Korea Autoglass and the surviving entity KCC Glass Corp may be a steal at its current price of around 45,000 won. A few other things you may want to look at are their dividends of which they are expected to pay their first one on the 1st of May this year. The expected dividend is 2100 won, coming to a roughly 5% yield, though since it's literally their first dividend, it's much too early to assume that this trend will either continue or stop as we go forward. Now one question that people may be asking, why is the PER so low? Well, I don't personally know, but here are my guesses. One, KCC Glass was far 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 behind Korea Autoglass in their industry prior to the merger. And the merger itself wasn't as widely publicized as say, Hyundai Heavy's acquisition of Tucson Infracore, or Korean Air's planned acquisition of Asiana. Another reason could just be that the Autoglass industry is business to business, aka B2B, which means that most consumers and retail investors don't really think about it unless they're compelled to. B2Bs tend to be this way and there are a lot of similar kinds of spaces where you could make a lot of money from profitable companies in unattractive aka boring ass industries. Also, the last one is probably just that there's other stuff to buy. I mean the whole market is booming and with innovation coming in virtually every industry it's easy to be entranced with the EVs and the biomed solutions and the robots and the flying unmanned taxis. In bull markets like the one we've been in, innovation and growth really takes the wheel and reliable, old, boring, relatively unnewsworthy stocks fall by the wayside. Plus, with little coverage of the merger that we talked about before, the company's profitability may have seen a big jump without a commensurate amount of fanfare. As with anything, you may want to wait for some tangible investor materials to figure out how the merger has materially affected the company's profitability, though it may still be too early to get a real number since it only really just happened. Or you could just gamble, I don't know, do you? Alright, the second company we're going to talk about today is another stock on the very 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 low end of the PER scale, clocking in at only 2.97 times earning. Korean hikers may know it mostly by its recognizable sport apparel brand, but we're talking about the holding company known as Cologne. As we mentioned in our episode last week, holdings companies are primarily in charge of managing, structuring, and streamlining their subsidiaries. Now, like a lot of the other major holdings companies in Korea, Cologne or Korong is in the chemicals and industrial material sector. And it has a little bit of diversification into the fashion sector with Cologne Sport and the more interesting RE Code Atelier. Atelier, whatever. The latter of these two companies is actually a really unique brand in that it's a fashion line based entirely around upcycling and sustainable fashion through the use of recycled materials. And we're going to use this as a launch point to talk about the main theme and direction that they've taken over the past few years, that being sustainability. So if you go over to their main website, it's clear how hard they're pushing their new initiatives with the slogan, We Together 2021. The blurb reads, Korong engages with society, shares hardships, and fulfills social responsibility. 
They have a dedicated CSR tab, which stands for Corporate Social Responsibility, in which they espouse their values. Particularly, they point out the categories of the future, in which the dreams of children come to fruition, eco and the value of nature, sharing through the corporate citizenship uh, efforts and campaigns, and finally, sports and culture. Now, I'm really not trying to be a mouthpiece for the company, I'm just pointing these things out because, I mean, the corporate world is currently shifting towards ESG initiatives as, you know, the world burns slowly. And it might actually pique your interest to know that a holdings company like Coron is actually trying to structure their entire business around it. Now, as mentioned in our video last week, it's important when considering the profitability of a holdings company to consider their subsidiaries since that's where the goods and services are actually provided. You'll want to do this on your own, but the companies like Coron Industries and Coron Global remain not only profitable but undervalued in their own right. I feel like I've done a lot of free advertising for the company already, so I'm gonna just stop here and talk about the stock talking about numbers. When compared to the other competitors in the chemicals industry, Coron's market cap is actually really very small. Still, their PE of 3 and price to book of 0.44 could make this stock a major steal if the company maintains its profitability and grows through its ESG initiatives as they pick up in earnest. Comparing its price to earnings across other wide-reaching and influential holding companies, it's clearly undervalued with LG sitting at around 12.99, SK at over 1000 times earnings, CJ at 16, and GS at negative 43.38. But ultimately, the way that you value this company will be different from the way that other people do, particularly with the notoriety of its competitors. But with an earnings report scheduled for around the end of this month or start of next month, you may want to hold off before committing any large sum of money. Or again, maybe not. I mean, you live your life. Alright, that's it for me. Have a good week. Take care until you get vaccinated. For those of you being forced to take the COVID test due to the simple fact that you're a foreigner, I feel for you. Just another one of those things. Anyways. Peace.